So hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna show you a super easy way to set up a trellis system in your garden. And this system is fantastic for tomatoes, cucumbers, or peas, um, really any kind of vining plant that you have. And the system I'm gonna show you today is significantly cheaper than buying a pre-built trellis from any of your big box stores. Um, you can do this in a matter of about five minutes and the materials are pretty easy to get. Now you can buy trellises from Gardener Supply or I mean your local gardening store. Um, the thing is they look really pretty but they can be pretty expensive. If you have an unlimited budget by all means go for the pretty ones. Uh, I don't so we went with more of a DIY approach. So you're going to want uh, per trellis at least two T-posts somewhere between the six to eight foot T-post size range. You're going to want uh, one eight foot cattle panel and the way I prefer to attach the cattle panel to the T-posts are using these T-post clips. Um, you can buy a bag of 50 or 100 of them for just a few dollars, but these are real nifty. And I recommend using these over zip ties. This is gonna give you a lot more support and these panels do have some significant weight to them. All you're gonna wanna do is um, you'll take your T-post, pound that into the ground, um, space it out appropriately, and then you will attach your T-post clips to the panel and then to the T-post and secure them in place. A couple things when it comes to T-posts. Um, I found I get much better quality T-posts shopping at my local tractor supply company over going to a hardware store like Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, now, obviously this is gonna vary for your individual area, but anytime I've gone to Lowe's and I've looked at T-posts, um, they seem to be of a lesser quality. The T-post doesn't seem to weigh as much and the T-post itself seems to have a lot more rust on it. Uh, the ones I get from TSC, um, all of them are going to have little rust spots, but the paint on them um, just seems to be much better. When I'm buying something brand new, I just like to, you know, see that the item has some quality to it and I don't want to be starting off with something that's already rusted because uh, it gives me concern about how long it's going to last. Also, this was a little tip from my father-in-law. Um, if you have a small level that's got a magnetic strip to it, they stick to the T-post quite nicely. Um, so it just kind of depends how particular you are. I mean, from a, a structural standpoint, these don't have to be perfect, um, but for aesthetic reasons, you can get yourself a magnetic level. And as you're hammering your T-post into the ground, kind of helps, uh, you know, get an idea if, if things are, are looking nice and straight. To kind of just start it off with my foot like that, kind of depends on your soil type. If you're in a heavy clay, it might not go in as easy as that did. And then once we kind of have it started, my T-post driver, slide that over the top. Put our level back on. It actually looks really good. So one other tip when you're buying T-posts is that you have to factor in the distance that they're going to go into the ground. So when we put our fence up around our garden, um, we selected eight foot T posts, which at first kind of seemed ridiculous, but we wanted to put up a six foot fence. I needed to account for the foot to foot and a half that the bottom of the T post was going to go into the ground. And we wanted a little bit of extra clearance at the top. Just think about how high you're going to want them. If you want a six foot high trellis, don't buy a six foot high T post. Make sure you're giving yourself um, a little bit of wiggle room there at the top to account for the T post actually going into the ground. I will demonstrate how you actually attach these to uh, the T-post and the panel. It's not very user intuitive. If you've done it before, great. It, it took me a while to kind of figure out how these work. So with your T-post clip, there's a short side and a long side. So what I like to do is I take the V side and we put that on the back of the T-post. And I clip on the short side to the cattle panel and loop it around. And then we take the long side and bring that over the top. And then if you've got yourself a pair of needle nose pliers, just grab the piece and tuck it under a little bit until you can grab it from the back side, and then you loop it around and then it's secure. You can put a bunch of weight on that and it's not gonna go anywhere. Again, this is what the T-post clip looks like. Kind of a V shape, you have a short side then you also have a longer side. So you're gonna take your clip, put the V on, you loop it around the cattle panel, and then you take this long side and push it over and get it up and over the panel. 
you can kind of push it down with your thumb a little bit and then you'll want to take a pair of needle nose pliers grab the clip tuck it so you can reach it from the underneath side and pull it around and you just want to wrap it around that panel and then you can put some weight on it and it's going to catch on the little notches on the front of your t-post and it's going to hold it in place and i like to put about three of these clips on um, each of my t-posts just one at the top one in the middle and one at the bottom it's secured as far as weight goes but as you can see with just two on this panel if i push up here it stays pretty secure but the part that i don't like is that when i push down here this part comes out so it's not going to go anywhere but when I'm tying things to it, especially when I've got stuff down here at the bottom, I just like it being secured from top to bottom. Now there is a special tool that you can get that are made to go with those T-post um, clips. There's an expensive one and a cheap one. I bought the expensive one and I haven't used it at all. Uh, the cheaper one appears to be somewhat effective, but if you have a pair of needle nose pliers, which most people do, I find these to be just as effective, and in my opinion, you don't need a special tool for this. When you do install your cattle panels, um, especially for anything that you're gonna have that's going to be climbing up high, um, one way to get a little bit more height out of your growth is to not attach your cattle panel all the way at ground level. Um, so by doing that, you're gonna get more vertical growing space, and the plants that you're planting aren't going to need to be supported until they grow 8 12 inches off the ground in most cases so at least that's the case for tomatoes so and, and really for tomatoes i probably could have raised this panel even a little bit higher before you would actually have to attach it and you might be able to get even a little bit more growing space our cucumbers were were fine with this spacing but i did find that our peas had a little bit trouble trying to attach to them so fine for tomatoes if you're using peas maybe a little closer to the ground or uh, maybe put some chicken wire over the cattle panel so that's it guys, super simple. This is our DIY trellis system that we use in our garden for all of our vining vegetable plants. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing to our channel. We do a lot of homesteading content and cover firewood, canning, and gardening. If you got any value out of today's video, please click the like button so this can spread to more people, and we'll see you in the next video.